Appreciate all your help and dedication to this. Um, all right, so you know it's two or three right now. I want to welcome everybody that's here today. And uh, uh, first off, I think it'd be uh, I'd love to open up with prayer with our faith-based organization meeting. And uh, Pastor Falcon. Thank you. Uh, we thank you, Father, for this opportunity to meet together. We pray, Lord, your presence and would be palpable to each of us as we discuss um, things going on in this community, the, the different situations, people, all the things that um, you have us focus on. Pray, Lord, that you guide us and give us uh, hearts of service. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. And we all say, Amen. Thank you. Great to have Commissioner Sweet with us as well. Welcome, sir. And, All right, for uh, being late. Okay, sir. And uh, ma'am, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, um, can you hear me? Yes. Great. Hi, I'm Lucinda Tatman. I'm from uh, St. James Episcopal Church in Coquille, um, and I work at Coquille Valley Hospital. I'm at work right now. Welcome. We're so happy to have you. Thank you. Let's continue with the introductions here on Zoom. Uh, Pastor Ford. Mm, I'm Don Ford with Harmony United Methodist okay. Church. Mr. John Sweet. Welcome. And uh, Councilor Drew Farmer. Hey there, I'm Drew. I'm a Hughes Bay City Councilor, and I sit on the House Bill 4123 work group. Thank you all for meeting on Zoom. And then I'd like to also introduce our other uh, stakeholders here this afternoon, uh, starting with Mr. Kaufman, and we'll go around. I'm uh, Dave Kaufman from Salvation Army. Dennis Smith, Mr. Church. Eric Lindsay, First Presbyterian Church. Seth. Barb Miller with the Federal Center. Chris Aiden Sylvester with the City of Peace Bay. And my name is Andrew Brainerd, Director of First Moment Response for Coos County and especially in Coos Bay, North Bend. So it's great to have you all here today. Uh, so there are some key things I'd like to look at today within our group. And uh, one of the things I'd like to touch base on is um, if you have any uh, key projects that you're working on right now, so our group knows what's going on. And then also, if we don't have many projects, maybe we can come up with some ideas on projects within the hour and uh, look at our top three. From there, we can look at it and see what it would be funding wise to accomplish those goals within the faith based stakeholder. So I would like to open it up to anybody that would like to speak first. Project. Are you talking about if if you have any ideal projects that are going on currently or some visions that you would like to see that maybe as our group can continue to grow that they all can work together? Yeah, recently, I don't know if it's right, but I'll share it anyway. I met recently with Ms. Kara Johnson over at Deborah, one sec. Can everybody hear? Okay, okay, go ahead. My apologies. No, I'm probably speak up on <laughs> inside voice. <laughs> oh, no, it's uh, I met with Kara Johnson over at Deborah Center. We were discussing the possibility of using the um, gymnasium at the Salvation Army for a, a warming shelter. And I have spoken to the Mark, the chief fire chief. And he came by and he looked at the at the property and we decided that tentatively without any plans or applications at this point so i don't notice it's true but just in discussion phase uh there should be no problems with permitting that so that we can have a shelter and i'm also working with coos health and wellness uh, mr harden who uh, equipped the building with uh pots and blankets and things like that that we could use for a warming shelter it would be a satellite Shelter and Devereaux would still operate. We were talking about the possibility of having families come to the Salvation Army and singles would stay. And this is just discussion. So it's not, there's nothing in setting stone. So I got to put that forward to my leadership and Salvation Army uh, 
paramilitary, so we're moved around uh, tentatively every three to five years. Um, or hopefully longer. Yeah, that's <laughs> God says it, I'm saying, but they, uh, they're making a change in Portland, so I can't really discuss anything until after June 28th when the new leader's in place, and he needs some time to come up to speed. So anyway, the, the plan for this would be to follow. Yeah, that's yeah, so pretty hard. Yes. We, we'd like to even think about things like um, air, I don't know how to say it, PC, but uh, like when the air, say there's a forest fire, all the smoke's blowing in. So you just hold on to that and tell people air quality. Air quality. Yeah. Okay. Excuse me, we've lost sound. Oh, can you speak up a little louder? Uh, my apologies. Yeah, uh, I was asking whether or not we have begun to sort through some criteria when they would make that um, satellite warming center available. So actually, we started to say we actually have a warming center policy okay. established. Um, that's our chief work on our tariff of, of what they operate under. Um, I don't remember the degree, but I wanted to get my eight third and six degrees there. Sorry. Um, just because of the wetness factor we have here brings us to the term, it, it feels cool that it's at. So, um, there, and then I think there's also weather events that need to trigger the policy. And I want to say, if I, if I remember correctly, I want to say that the warming center was open eight times cyber. I heard that too. Or maybe I compared to the average of how many? Um, 25. Uh, it, it, it was a long hole in the yeah. All right, so maybe possibly looking at in June more movement in yeah. that direction. Then after, the after June, uh, he doesn't arrive, but the leader doesn't arrive till 20. So the after getting arrives and given a couple of weeks to get in place. All right, we'll be praying about that for sure. Yeah, please. Yeah. Um, anybody else would like to speak currently what they're working on or business? Eric, Pastor Eric. Yeah, I could share that we are currently as a board, a church board, looking at um uh, mimicking the Harmony Methodist Church uh uh of transitional homes that pair with Dev Road's uh, Holy Village model, um, doing three little uh, either pallet home or maybe a little bigger um, not tiny homes, but they're not shed on the combination of both. But that would be a little bigger that could accommodate a family in an emergency situation. Um, still ongoing to figure out what it'll be, but to provide a space, and, and Andrew, you've been a part of that as well, yeah. Yeah, that conversation. Uh, uh, like what Harmony does, providing an emergency space, whether that's between the street and Colbing Village, or just as an extension of, of Colbing to have more rooms. On the street. That program would be overseen by everyone. Um, and we're currently in, at the stage where uh, Tara and, and, and us are putting a little agreement together as to all the ins and outs of what the program might look like. And if our board and and Deborah can come to a consensus there, then we'll pitch that to our insurance company. And uh, uh, but everything works good there, and then we'll pitch it to our congregation. <laughs> uh, not to get necessarily to get their uh, vote on it per se, but we, we would like for them to support this this idea, which I think that they will, but uh, our board will. Be voting on it hopefully very soon. Um, the only challenge right now is that I can go on a three month sabbatical at the end of July. So 
we probably won't be moving forward on this. Um, but we could be making decisions on moving for that dice. Like all the programs that we've spoken to, the county, yes, to the city of North Bend, uh, Devereaux, uh, different grants are available to Presbytery, which is our regional church body, as well as just our local church. Uh, it seems like there are a lot of resources, but I'm sure we'll want to have whatever, whatever else. That's the basic idea. So one of the two things I want to add with that conversation here. So if you're a church or somebody that's looking, I know um, Pastor Ford has probably been in talks with these before as well. Insurance can be complicated of being referred by an insurance company. Can you reference an insurance that you're maybe currently working with? So if we have others that want to do the same idea and looking for that right insurance that could actually help out with the plans, who would you refer to? If you don't mind me asking. Sure. Well, I know John will speak for, for Harmony. I, I, I'll say that we're currently using Insurance Board, which is a collection of 4,000 churches that buy into this insurance uh, coverage. And uh, like a cooperative. Yeah. So it's like a teacher of co op. Self insurance for board. Yeah. So uh, that, you know, that certainly determines. The cost, but it also we've just been overwhelmed by the coverage. It just seems to be massive. But well, I can, from my from my standpoint at Harmony, um, we have Church Mutual, which is another uh, uh, church group insurance, we'll call it. And as long as uh, it's a church sponsored program. Um, then liability carries over to whoever's on the boat, who's ever in the parking lot, who's ever there, who's on the property, et cetera, et cetera, with Church Mutual. And we do not insure the individual buildings for physical loss or damage. That would just, that's, that's not worth it for that amount of money. So our liability covers right over into the parking lot. It even covered in the parking lot. We had a few more than just three pallet homes in the parking lot a couple of years ago. So, um, you need to check a see if the liability because it's church, your church sponsored activity is or church sponsored um, uh, outreach mission. They'll just if for a small fee they'll cover your liability. Yeah, I'm hoping that insurance board does the same because I think they've they've indicated that that they would and that they do cover the other churches that are doing it in other places in Oregon, Washington. So we're pretty confident that when we bring this agreement to them, they're going to ensure it. And I assume that like with Church Mutual, there will be a fee to, to add on to that. Um, just for perspective, uh, Gold Beach Presbyterian Church operates a hostel down there. What's a hostel? Well, it's more like a small hotel. Oh, so it's a dormitory. Yeah. And they charge they they charge people that come and stay in it. So it's 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 not a it could be used as an emergency shelter, not being used as that, being used as a recreational, you know, group uh, dormitory hospital. They're usually pretty, and they're very very cheap. You know, but just in terms of insurance, their insurance is covering it for like an additional. Premium and, year. <laughs> and that's a little kind of free game. They can be there as long as they want. These these uh, programs have been specialized and overseen by programs like the church and Devereaux. So just for perspective, I feel like we're pretty confident that the insurance board would cover us. We don't have the green light yet. We're still working to that. But I think it might be important to add what Eric mentioned that our previous coverage would not have worked uh, from a commercial care. Yes. And so it has been necessary for us to look for um, uh, for a carrier that responds to the, to the unique idiosyncrasies of uh, of church programming and uh, 
and community service. And uh, so figuring out who those carriers are uh, took some uh, creative investigation. And, uh, so it's important for us to be able to share that information. And so with that said, I want to also uh, let everybody know uh, Joe Roll from Coos County is on our Zoom call as well, and Councillor uh, Stephanie Kilmer from the City of Coos Bay as well. Um, going in with that conversation, um, would you like to talk about that? It sounds like you have a current project going on right now that you're working with the insurance company. Is that true? Well, it, we're it's all your team. team. Okay, for team. my apologies. So when Eric is on... Uh, on his sabbatical, yes, I'm, I'm going to become all right. That's great to know. I'm a retired mission worker for the church, I'm not really a minister, but uh, he's an elder of our church, yes. Oh, at Presbyterian Church, and yes, yeah, retired Presbyterian mission worker for 40 some 43 years. years. And what's your name again <laughs> for everybody else to know? Dennis Smith. Dennis Smith, thank you. You have any additions that you want to talk about? Yeah, no, that was good. That was a good thing to add because, yeah, because it's something that that I think from what I've heard about your conversation with the session at our church. Right. And that's just the reality. And so the fact that you've been able to take the initiative to look for some more creative alternatives. Opens up. Andrew, the audio keeps going out, so I don't know if somebody's not talking to the camera or if you don't have sure. it on the L for audio. And not look at the person that I'm talking to. Thank you. Pastor, anything more you like to fill in? Yeah, I'll just reemphasize that. Yeah, it might just take more creative thinking. If you're a bit, if you're able to do something like what we're looking into, what Dawn and Harmony have already been doing for quite a while, there's it, it does take some thinking outside the box that we're, we're looking into, and we're happy to have lots of support now. See that that support that we can make out of reality. Well, thank you, ladies. You want to bring things table or can we open up to our Zoom? Okay, we'll open up our Zoom. Um, let's start with um, our uh, correct me, uh, Coquille. Um, what's your name again? My apologies, Lucinda. Lucinda, welcome again. Um, Thank you yourself and then um talk about if you have any current plans going on right now or you can think of plans for the future for Pews County. Yeah no we really don't right now. Uh, we're transitioning to uh, a new uh, clergy so and we our previous uh, priest was only with us for less than a year so we've been kind of going through a big, big transition actually over the last three years or so. And one of my goals today was just to find out what was going on out there in the faith community and to be able to bring that back to um, our congregation and see how we can um, help, how we can join with other teams to uh, move this forward um, to help our homeless brothers and sisters. Thank you. Um, from the conversations that we've had already, do you have any great ideas that you'd love to see within Coos County that we might not have right now? <laughs> great ideas. Um, I, you know, I, I keep hoping there's somebody smarter than me that's working on um, this problem, but it doesn't really quite seem that way. It seems like the, issue, the real solutions come from the grassroots level, but we need, um, you know, financial support on a bigger level. Um, so um, I guess my, our big idea or what our concern is, at least in Coquille, is that we as other communities have seen an uptick of, uh, of unhoused um, people. And um, as I said, I work at Coquille Valley Hospital and it's definitely an issue for us um, in our emergency room. And, you know, where what we what, we, what kind of service where we can refer these patients, you know, these people to that don't have anywhere to go, um, that are unhoused. So I wish I had some better ideas, but I don't. I just 
want to be able to help others who've got a better plan developed than, than we do here in Coquille, because I don't think there's much of a plan here right now. Um, you know, and this might be carrying off our meeting conversation, but some of the things I'm curious about without crossing the HIPAA line, how many homeless from your hospital do you average a day or by month? And are they from Coquille or are they spread out from everywhere? Um, there, well, there's a mixture of, of, of patients. Um, some people are passing through, if you will. Um, some people that they, they run out of, of resources and this is where they run out of gas money and they end up here and they get sick and you know end up in our emergency room. I would say uh, conservatively, we're looking at four to six people a week that we see. And one of our, we just don't know where to like resource, you know, to be able to send these patients to. We the Devereaux Center is certainly a place that you know that we're aware of, but that's really the only place that we know of to be able to refer these people. And then how do we get them there? That's another piece of, of the problem is you know getting them from Coquille, you know, to there um, is an issue. And you know, resources are limited. Um, I think the faith community in Coquille, um, I'm hoping to bring those people together and come up with a plan, um, even just a transportation plan to help these people, you know, be able to access, you know, more resources in Coos Bay and North Bend, because it's a real problem for folks here that are on very limited, you know, incomes, they don't have the gas money. You could be our voice of stakeholders for Coquille, and uh, we appreciate what you can share among the other congregations. If you have time, please with Coquille as well. Right. Um, again, this is being reported that we've been able to share it to people that would like to know what happens mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I hate to put Barb on the spot on this, and she's very new in her position, but the question she had brought up is very interesting. Has it ever been brought up about the transportation of people from Coquille and services at the Devereaux Center? Yeah, um, to my knowledge, the, the van that we have is local. So we will pick people up at various places throughout the city and bring them to the Devereaux Center. But I listen to I and will be talking to the executive director about this to see if there's a way that people can be brought here. Um, I also wanted to mention, have you ever heard of the gospel mission? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's another resource um, aside from the Devereaux Center where uh, if they meet the, they're not as low barrier as we are. Um, okay. If they, if they meet those minimum requirements, then the mission is wonderful, wonderful mm -hmm. resource as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, thank you. So your van is like local Coos Bay, North Bend? Yeah, it, it typically runs, runs throughout the, the two cities, mm -hmm. yes. But she's gonna look into and help you out as well, and she's gonna speak to Tara, the executive director. Wonderful, here, so. wonderful. Th thank you for sharing the information, I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, you can reach me at Coca Valley Hospital most people know me here. Just ask for Lucinda. They'll know I'm the only one. <laughs> Lucinda at Coquille Valley Hospital. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll be back in touch with you. Thank you very much. That would be great. Well, Thank you. Pastor Don Ford. I'm still here. Would you like to share anything that you have currently going on or a little bit of vision for a few minutes? <laughs> That's, you know, I you notice I said the keyword for a few minutes, and I love to use very much, buddy. But I just want to keep it. <laughs> yeah, all the knowledge there. But do you have some key things that you think that might be incredible work that we can have in Coos County to look at? I think the best thing that we could do uh, as a group uh, stakeholders that we are is to make sure we each have a band aid for the problem, because none of us are going to solve the big overall problem of homelessness and that kind of thing. But we sure need a lot more band-aids where people can go overnight 
for two or three days or even a week at a time um, to try to transition to something else to get the services they needed, whether um, they have a problem with drugs, alcohol, mental illness, or whatever the problem is. But we need more. I, I just call them band-aids because they're not going to solve the problem, but it's going to temporarily um, house them or put a roof over their head of some kinds. And that's, that's the whole project of the three pallet homes. We have. I wouldn't mind getting another three, but we'll see what happens on that. And so one of the key things we want to do is if you had the vision, also figure out a budget of how much it would cost because we work with a resource called Rock and they are planning on helping us contribute to projects that we would like to see. But they want to also see what the cost will be as well. Key thing. So that's another thing to think about as we talk about the end as well. Um, I would like to open up to our uh, city and county officials as well. Maybe if you are willing to get a little report of what's going on with the county within the city as well. And uh, Commissioner John Sweet, would you mind taking the floor and talk a little bit about what's going on within the county? Excuse me, it took me a while to get unmuted. Uh, actually, the work we've been doing has been largely with our planning department, uh, trying to find a, a place that uh, uh, we can direct uh, homeless people to that are camping on parts of the county where they aren't welcome to a, a, a safer, better place for them. And uh, it, it's it, frankly, it, despite all the land we have, um, there's a lot of land in this county. Not much of it belongs to us. It, it's it, but we have a lot of acreage. But it's it's still a problem, you know. Trying to find a good place. Um, a lot of the property we have is is not very conveniently located to the cities where most of the people, most of the homeless, seem to congregate. So it it wouldn't be very convenient for them. And we we want to do something that would be useful if we do it. Uh, other parts of our uh, county are in our county forest, and we're very, very, we're dependent upon that forest for um, revenues to give some con context to that. Uh, from taxes, we generate uh, about $6 million a year. From our county forest, we develop about a $3 million a year profit. And um, so if, um, if, if that were to burn up, uh, it would put the county in dire straits. Uh, we'd either have to raise taxes by 50% or reduce services considerably. And neither is a, an alternative. So we, we have to be careful about where we put the, uh, the homeless. So we're still struggling with that. And uh, Jill's been right at the forefront of that. And, and uh, I, I'd like to, have her comment on it. Perhaps she can enlarge on some of the uh, what I've said, or even correct what I've said. Thank you, Jill. So yeah, we've been working just to um, discuss more about our homeless um, resting camping ordinance, and it's opened up a different um, view, I think, from all of us about where. Um, would be appropriate um, to provide a safe place for people that um, are experiencing homelessness. Um, we looked at various co county owned properties and we looked at um, right away areas and we've looked all the way from, you know, powers to lakeside and it's, it is a difficult task and I really appreciate the person that said <laughs> Hopefully somebody smarter than us is working on this. <laughs> and we I don't think found that person. Yet. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, no, that shouldn't be hard to do. <laughs> no one stepped up. <laughs> because it is it is a, a tough topic, especially when um you're trying to take small bites out of it um and keeping the larger goal in mind. Um so that's all I really have to say about that. I mean, on the housing part, um, the county and the cities are always working to try to generate more housing production. Um, so we are trying to do that as well for the people that maybe have the funding to get into housing, but the housing's just not there. 
Thank you. Anybody have any questions for that? Yeah. Um, now let's go ahead with the city of Coos Bay. Anybody would like to represent Coos Bay and talk about what's currently going on in Coos Bay? This is Drew. Um, in the goals for this next block, we have, uh, I'm trying to think because Nicole's going to know where to stop me. We've had discussions about some things in public meetings and some things not, but uh, one of the goals for this year is where to help the Devereaux Center move so that it can expand its capacity and operate in an environment that is more accommodating. Uh, another thing I've been up, say again? You said that's a good place to stop right there. <laughs> that sounds right. That might um, involve an acquisition. solidify what that looks like, um, which may impact the cost of the so, um, Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's always going to be an issue. Uh, we all would love to have our own neighborhood. Um, unfortunately, our community is suffering as a whole, and we now, you know, we've been, we've been, we're close to here, and we've got a lot of services, and we somehow figure out how we can uh, work together in our space, but also encourage and support these outlying communities who are challenged with similar issues and maybe financial and support normal things. But if we keep having the influx of people, we're going to struggle here in this area to support. So somehow we've got to, I don't know what that is, that satellite in all these little kind of outlying areas. Um, these smaller models work there. Um, I don't know, but adding to our numbers here is that we have the services. It makes sense that they're coming here, but we can get support out there. One of the other projects I've been able to work on is I've gotten to talk to the executive director for Oregon Housing and Community Services three times in the last month, and her assistant an extra fourth time about um, state land surplusing. Uh, so that would also hopefully help some of the counties plight where they have a, a lot of land is technically in the county. It's not owned by the county and a good chunk of that land, I would imagine is state land that could be put to better use if they were willing to get off the pot. Um, so yeah, they're, they're starting to have a town where it sounds like I'm getting to them and they may take some action because it's part of what they put in one of the executive orders we were excluded from. So and it was something I had proposed to them. Um, and yeah, also talking to them about making sure the governor looks at what commissions she has control over, not just what land the state has, but what land is controlled by entities that the state appoints. Um, so trying to help them also broaden their perspective on where resources for housing development could be. And as a representative to the Oregon Health Authority, helping them understand that when they get funding for supported housing in a community like ours, you could build as much supported housing as you want. We don't have housing for the people that would provide the supports. So trying to get some of these entities to broaden their perspective that it's not just making things we call supported housing, but also ensuring there's somewhere for the medical staff, the nurses, the doctors to live. Otherwise, those folks aren't going to get supported. You'll have just built a thing that says supported housing on the door. But that's what I've been up to. Thank you, Councillor Farmer. Councillor Kilmer, do you have any word for the group today? Oh my goodness, I couldn't get that to work. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I think Drew really covered it. Um, I know that um, some of the discussion about um, the services that are um, provided in our community, um, I hope that the smaller communities do recognize that if there is not some sort of confinement when they do bring them here, then they are ending up in our communities and our neighborhoods and things like that. So I think, um, you know, at some point, I hope that we are looking at ways to address 
some things in some satellite communities, or maybe some satellite services in your communities, because that is the biggest uh, issue that we have from our uh, citizens that are that are in the community and are, um, you know, encountering these situations as well. I, that's the only uh, thing I would would say. Um, I think it is um, impressive that Andrew has been able to bring so many minds together. Um, we know we have a situation that is uh, very critical and um, like I've heard over and over, it's going to take a lot of minds to get to get this to the point where we get um, get this under hopefully under some sort of control. Thank you, Councilor Kelly. Um, Barb, would you like to again give your title? What you do with the Devro Center for people that don't know? Sure. And and maybe if you want, you would like to have any things you would like to talk. Well, um, so. I'm the new development director for the Devereaux Center. Um, I'm working on a part-time basis, although it, it really is a full-time job. My responsibility is for fundraising, community outreach, marketing, and promotions. So, um, you know, there's so <laughs> much. I know, I know. Um, I'm trying to squeeze in. Uh, but, you know, as you may be aware Deborah Center isn't just the center that feeds clothes and, and takes care of daily uh, folks that come through the doors, but we also have three supportive houses uh, with a fourth one on the way uh, that will be an adult foster care for mentally ill and will house five people. Uh, so that is in the process. Uh, we also, of course, have the Cold Bay Village that we're working with. So there's, you know, with the influx, we are seeing an influx of more people coming through. Our warming center was open longer this year than it's ever been. Um, so with the growth and everything, <laughs> it's up to God. But, um, you know, funding of the Deborah Center is going to be important for the community. So touch basing on that, and a lot of people might have missed on it. How many days within the year of last year that carried over to this year was the warming center open compared to previous years? Of 89, which is almost double what it's been open. So our climate and you know our our weather has impacted. And financially as well. Yes. With the increase of what happened. Yes. So every everything has been everything. So while we're here, what can our faith-based organization do to help out with the railroad center financially? And can you give an example of what might be happening here soon in Grand Father's Day? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. So we did, um, one of the churches did reach out to us and they're going to do a second collection on Father's Day for both of those services that they're going to be done for the Deborah Center, which is wonderful. Um, as, as churches are looking at where their money is going, you know, supporting the Deborah Center, and I know a lot of them support the Gospel Mission, which is wonderful and it's a wonderful organization, but don't forget about the Deborah Center. We kind of are ground zero. We work with people that don't qualify for other services. So um, it's challenging. So it's kind of the thing that you're going to talk about the Deborah Center and everything that happens with the funds and kind of gets the church involved. And maybe there might be a church that would like to do that as well. They're willing to talk with you and see what yeah, you like absolutely you reach out to me and we'd love to have that opportunity to come and speak to the congregation that's what we'll be doing at this church um, both services will have an opportunity to stand up and say a little bit about Deborah Center so many people hear the Deborah Center and all they think about what's on its mark and that is a place where people come because it's safe it's a place that they won't get kicked out of during the day. Um, so 
and, and a lot of these people are mentally ill, do have substance use issues. So it's not a pretty place at all, but we do so much. And uh, we just um, we just celebrated a one year anniversary for the PKB project, which every other Tuesday, there's a group of medical professionals that are in the health or uh, sorry, uh, mental health, behavioral health, spiritual, and medical. We have a medical doctor. And this group has grown from six providers to 20 providers. They come every other Tuesday and it's a mobile unit. They come, they take over the Devereaux Center, and it's a place where people can come in and get their wounds treated. They can talk to advanced health, they can talk to Bay uh, area, Bay, Bay area, Bay area first step. Um, there's representatives from many, many different providers that are all coming to the center. And I think that's what's important to pay attention to is this group of people, and I learned this from you, Pastor Don, um, you can't make appointments for them to go to a, to go anywhere. You know, they're not going to make doctor's appointments. They're they're not going to stay on top of their medications. Um, they're incapable of it, doing it on their own. So this is a very important thing that we're also providing, and hopefully it will continue to expand. It, it really has expanded over the last year. We've served um, 200, I think it was 238 different patients in 50, 50 visits. In 50 visits. Anybody, anybody have to go ahead? Uh, one other thing yeah. I wanted to mention in when I was doing my volunteer work and talking to various pastors, one of the things that came up was a wish list of some sort of software that could uh, capture people that are coming through your doors and asking for things and make, you know, I know a lot of churches, there's a lot of scammers out there, unfortunately, and churches want to have a good feeling when they give gas money and know that this is not somebody that's just taking advantage of them. So we're talking with Advanced Health, who has a blanket, uh, they have a software that's called Unite Us, and they have blanket usage of it. So there's no there's user fees that are involved. And I'm going to be getting that demo soon. Um, we're trying to adapt it to where all the churches in the area could utilize this software and keep track of people. So we're very excited about that. But that's just in the beginning stages of that season to go up there. So talking about the beginning stages and when we decide to meet again or down the road, I think it would be appropriate for the stakeholders that we know about that program so we can have it in a meeting and discuss it. And then we can spread out to the other church and put it in. Yeah, I think that's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. So I have I have my hopes. Um the person I'm working with again to help, she feels like it's gonna be a good solution for us. So okay. any any more questions for Barb? Yeah. Um, one of them is a chaplain for the uh, let's see, the Bill Mole is chaplain for the, the Housing Community, uh, community Church, and he's also part of the yeah, it's the mobile response team. Mobile response team. Mm -hmm. So, so we have him there, and there's another chaplain that comes. But you absolutely, absolutely. So I'll talk to Kara and thank you, Stafford, who's in charge of that. Tanya Stump from the Department of Education, he's my job here. He's very interested in that. He has a background in substance use. Yes. Stump, S T U M P S. Hi, Barb. This is Lucinda from uh, Coquille again. And I'd be interested in talking to you. Maybe we can we can talk offline about the possibility of uh, St. James hosting some type of medical clinic screening. 
Um, I've got a hospital full of nurses and we've got like 14 providers that work for the hospital now. And we are a community hospital and um, want to do more outreach this next year. It's something that's been a focus um, of our board of directors. So there may be an opportunity to offer that to some local people here in Coquille. So we can, if we want to talk offline about that, that'd be great. Be happy to, to and, and I'm certainly not in charge of it, but I can put you in touch. I'm sorry, you were breaking up there. I didn't hear you. All right. Yes, you and I will talk and I'll put you in touch with the people that that perfect. Are, okay, are. thank you. Great. So one of the key things that I'd love to see now, unless anybody has any additions, come out with a plan. Come out with a plan that you're currently working on and you'd love to see. Send me it by email. And then maybe if you can get some kind of quote of price, what that might cost, that maybe our grant funding can help out. That would be a key thing to use as well. And uh, one of the other things I'd like to open up to the group that is here today is my question is, would our stakeholder group like to work every two weeks, monthly, or quarterly? So I'd like to open it up with the group to see what they would think. Well, this is Lucinda. Um, I go to a lot of meetings, so I'm okay with quarterly <laughs> as long as we have a good, um, you know, can email you and, you know, send you questions, et cetera. Yeah, that'd be fine with me. And within those I, questions for emails, um, I'd love to share among our group. Yeah, our that would be great. Perfect. Yeah. That are here today. Yes. For quarterly. I was going to say monthly. It's my monthly. 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 Okay. Pastor Ford? Um, monthly at the very uh, most at this point. I do boards myself. So. Okay, with the census of monthly. Um, and if you're not able to make it to, these will be recorded and you'll still be informed, but I think we'll have it monthly. Um, we are 10 minutes away from 3 p.m. Um, does anybody have anything else you'd like to share before we call it a great afternoon? Oh, okay. Let's check right here. And my apologies for seeing this. Okay. Um, oh, okay. We need to close the blinds better. Thank you, Jill. And thank you for the comment there, Drew, as well. <laughs> and uh, we are working on the blind issue currently right now. So, um, let me see here. Okay, anything else before we close? I have, I have one thing left, Andrew. Yes, I'd like to say that, uh, from my knowledge, most every church, um, religious organization in the cities and in the county do something in their small way to help the homeless one way or the other. Some feed them, some give out meals, some provide uh, money for gas cards, some provide this or that. But most every, most every faith-related uh, organization in the county, in some small way, uh, the best they can based on their uh, attendance and based on their giving and that kind of thing. So it needs to be remembered that the faith faith is an integral part of helping in the long run with uh, the number of problems or the number of things we face in the community. Just want to say that. Thank you. In addition to that, I want to welcome everybody. Um, like I said, we are going to have a similar faith based stakeholder meeting, but with our local businesses, it will be released either by the end of today or tomorrow. I've worked with the Bowl and Alley and then also with Janice and Allison. We are going to meet with the local businesses of Coos County on uh, Thursday, June 29th from 2 to 5 p.m. at North Finlay's on the deck. Um, we are going to have uh, the same amount of panelists, maybe one more additional. Um, this time we're also going to have uh, Sheriff uh, Gabe Fabrizio from Coos County and then also uh, Kyle Brown uh, 
from uh, Operation Rebuild Hope. Uh, again, it's welcome to our businesses and churches. You know, you fall in the same category and you're welcome to them as well. And so that will be on the 29th and two to five at the North Bend Lanes there on the deck. So if anybody doesn't have any other words, I would actually like to ask Pastor Don Ford to conclude us with prayer and we'll call it a great afternoon. Hey, Pastor, please. Uh, there you go. I got it. Gracious and holy God, creator God, we give you thanks for all that you have given us. Help us to share what we have with those others, whoever the others may be. With us all as we go about our work and help us to live what we believe each and every day and in the way that we talk to others, we interact with others, and the way we live our lives. We thank you for your, your help through all things. In the name of your son, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. And thank you, everyone. I will send the schedule out a month from now to meet again. And thank you so much. And thank you for all those that could join us on Zoom from the county and the cities as well. And pastors, thank you so much.